Hello and welcome back to another Factorio tutorial. My name is Negative Root and let's get cranky. Today we're going to be talking about smart furnaces. Now this is uh, one of my late game factories. It's actually the factory from my Let's Play. And we have my furnace set up. Now this did a good job for me. It, um, yeah, it really ticks the, tick the boxes. Um, but uh, you'll notice that with most standard setups, so where you have raw resource in on belts, um, uh, converted product out on belts, so here and here, you'll notice that you end up with this kind of situation happening where, okay, we've got plenty of iron, so we've got, you know, furnaces sitting here not doing anything, they're full of, full of iron plate, but we've got, um, you know, we could potentially use more copper because these lines aren't backing up at all. You know, our factory is just using every little bit it can get. So, uh, the smart furnace is actually aimed at adjusting your production to what you need. So right now, if I need more copper, I all I can do is, is put in more raw materials and build more furnaces. That's, that's the only solution I've got. That's as smart as the system gets. A smart furnace, however, it will use all the furnaces that you've got and it will adjust to what you require. So if you need more iron plate, it'll make more iron plate. It, once you've finished and you don't need any more iron plate, it'll turn off. Same deal with copper. So let's load into the smart furnace factory and I'll, uh, I'll demonstrate how it works. Now, you'll notice that we're in the same spot of the factory right now. Now this relies on logistic spots. Now you'll notice that I've got a square mapped out with them here 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 and around the outside now what that does is it mean, means that there's going to be really really good coverage here in the middle and that's important because we're going to be moving a lot of things around and it's not uh, usually the way you want to do it uh, so let's uh, let's run through the build I've only got two inputs uh, I need to credit um, RK84. Aristo did a great job. It was his idea to do it this way. And it was Medjus Salem uh, who came up with the original idea of having a furnace set up that adjusted to how much you needed of something. So what we've got is we've got a setup where we've got a whole bunch of raw material okay, waiting everywhere and ready to be um, converted into either iron plate or copper okay so that's all there and waiting now this here is how it's controlled so basically this is this is the same as every other green uh, wire setup normally is this is just a counter okay so right now I can tell that I have about 9,000 uh, iron plate and there it is 9.2 I have about 9,000 iron plate because all of these are in increments of 1,000 so if I have science packs in all of these as my counters it will say okay well I've got um, I've got only 1000 in the system and I need to make more okay so these are all run off certain conditions now this will only work when there is zero zero science packs in the system this will only work when there's one now this means that they are set to a very very fine tolerance you'll notice how that just picks up the next one and puts it in and then that's it it doesn't go any further that was a straight one so that's how that works now as our demand and everything changes so does our production so the blue science pack is for iron the red science pack is for copper now you can see here that this will put something in if there are no science packs in the um, green wires okay so it's saying okay if there's zero in the boxes already and and if there is less than 10,000 iron plate in total which there is currently there's only 9.3 okay this this will put it take it out when we hit 10,000 okay this is for when we hit 9,000. This will turn on extra furnaces when we have less than 9,000 
and we have one already in. So in this way, it will count up and it will increase how much capacity our smart furnace is doing. This is the same except for copper. Now we'll run through and the programming of this and how it all works. Obviously I've got my raw materials all coming in into passive providers. Uh, ideally I'd like to actually move them a little bit closer uh, if, I, if I did this build again. Now this is an offset pattern. So in my build what we have is we have 10 rows. So we have row 1, row 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 on the end. That's how it all works out. Now that all these rows correspond with one here. So you'll notice that we've got one science pack in the system. Up here, this is work when it's greater than zero. Okay? And because it's taking it out of this, it needs that filter on it. This is greater than nine. So the reason that's greater than nine and not greater than zero is because it's reversed. When we have a need for copper plate, okay, it will start producing on this side of the factory, of, of the furnace, sorry, the smart furnace, so that we don't have a conflict here of this line trying to make two things. I'll have this line making um, iron plate and this line making copper. As each line increases, you see if this is greater than one. So this is greater than zero. So if there's one or more iron red packs in here, it'll work, okay, it'll put things in the factory into the furnace. If there's greater than two, and it's a reverse for iron up here. So greater than one, greater than two, greater than three, greater than four, greater than five, greater than six. So you can see that if this ends up with more and more stuff in here, that is to say, if these get triggered by this logistics network condition of saying, okay, we have less than 9,000 iron plate or we have less than 8,000 or we're in big trouble and we've got less than 1,000 in this way it'll say okay if we've got less than 1,000 we're going to have uh, basically 10 blue science in the logistics network so that means every single row every single one of these inserters will be activated and they'll put things in the factory for you they'll put things in the furnace now, a couple of key things. Um, one, you, with this sensor, it works on the logistics system. Notice this is the logistics network. It's not a green wire, and it's not a red wire. It is logistics. So you cannot, cannot have in here something that will creep into the logistics network you know, over in your main factory. Because if you're moving blue science around, for example, that will throw out the count it can only ever have this amount in the logistics network it can't ever have more that's really really important now let us have a quick look at production you will notice right now that we're making 252 of um, of iron pretty um, pretty small fly fry we've got um, 14 K of um, copper which is pretty cool now what I'll do is I'll just throw down a really quick build that will basically saturate our um, our lines and hopefully get things uh, moving a little bit faster so that we can see how the factory works let me just uh, grab a quick blueprint here Just delete that. Where? Ah, here it is. Perfect. So right now the drain on the system will increase, which is a good thing. So each of these is asking for a hundred. Now that's going to take an amount out. Now you notice that the second line is clicked on. 
and that's because now you'll notice in my logistic storage system I've only got 8.1k so down here okay you see that a second science pack has come in because this has been triggered we have less than 9,000 and this is already here so that's how that triggers now let me just come up here and I'll put down a um, a copper build as well So we're starting to see more iron plate through the system. So basically this is just reactivating my factory so that we start to see more drain on the system. Now notice the third line has now kicked on. So we've got this line going. Let me go over here a little bit closer. See how this is now going? Okay. And our robots are picking up our, um, our raw products and it's bringing it in. Okay, what's happening now as this is working on our logistics system, okay, it's sensed that we've got less than 8,000, which we've got 7.6. Okay, um, so it said, okay, well, we need we need more iron plates, so make more. So it's kicked on a third line, which is very cool. Let me just up the speed here a little bit. We need two of them. One here and one here. Now hopefully this is going to demonstrate what uh, what this factory does for us. I already had two. That's a bugger. Okay, so you notice that we've got four lines on now. This is all working away quite nicely. Copper is yet to come on, and there's a reason for that. It's because we've got 11k in the system. So, you'll notice that our production, right, of iron plate is now up to 1,000 a minute. If we look back, the orange, see how there was a kick there? Okay, that's because I'm increasing the drain on the factory. Now you'll notice here that my um, copper cable production is starting to increase now because my electronic circuits are also starting to increase. So it's all a bit of a cascading reaction um, for this factory because I'm turning it all back on again. Now this is doing a pretty good job of packing that line. Notice that the um, the speed, oh, sorry, my storage on iron plates is still falling. So we're down to 6.1k now. Which um, is a little bit concerning, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping that it's going to really show how the, this factory, okay, a fifth line is now kicked on for iron plate. So this, see now here we've got 5, and that's because we're below 6k. So we've got 5.8. So this, see the orange line, there's another kick. Then we go to a bigger one. You see how every time it's just kicking and upping what it's producing to try and level out how much is actually in the system. We're burning it pretty damn fast too. So that's pretty cool. So we're using about 1600 a minute. You see that here? Which is very cool because when this gets to 1600, we'll uh, we'll hit a bit of a like an equilibrium point and basically the the furnaces will just run in free mode from there. Once we hit that equilibrium, they'll uh, it'll stop ramping up production. Now this this you can build in a much bigger configuration. The bigger it is, the more power it'll use, but you do get the uh, the wonderful benefit of um, a furnace setup that will 
adjust to what you need in your factory and I'm there frankly is no better way of doing it now you'll notice that we've finally burnt through what we had um, in our copper we got to 9.4 K that which means that this is now clicked on now obviously we've got a lot of bots moving around so here now that this is clicked on we see one red um, science pack okay that's because the systems detected that we have less than 10,000 in storage so it's just decided okay we start need to start making some copper here uh, maybe it's a good idea and we, we get that going I'm hoping to there we go did you see you see how this is flicking on and off Okay, it's, it's it's turning on and off because we we got 5k and then we don't and then we do then we don't and then we do then we don't we don't anymore now we do now we don't you see how it's detecting it's sitting right on that edge now meanwhile we've gone to 8.7k of copper so it's decided okay well we need we need more capacity so it's turned on a second row of copper furnaces on this side of the factory you see here now the only issue is right you need to make sure these filters are set big enough and I'm thinking that 10 is actually probably where they need to be so if I was going to do this again that's what I'd do see if I'm smart what I can do now making making wholesale changes to the factory is pretty it's pretty time consuming because you do need to get it right it's easy it's, it's easy to do once you you understand what's going on it does take a little bit of time of you know to get your head around it it took me three hours to rebuild this last uh, last night I did it live on twitch and you can watch the, the view on demand if you want on the twitch channel um, it's it's very interesting. I I spend a lot of time cursing, and there's a lot of fun, but I think that this is the best way of doing a furnace. I don't I don't think this can be topped really. Uh, the entire point of Factorio is to make factories that are efficient. You know that that do um, that are smart, that adapt, that can you know make your products in volumes that you want you know the old basically unrestricted approach to um, to factories is, is kind of that that's for the early game by the time you get to the mid game you know you should be looking at, at things similar to this where you're trying to where you're trying to um, you know apply a better way of building and, and trying to make it so that your your factories um, kind of run themselves you know you you're here trying to um, get the planet ready for humans so you want to do it in a way that that uses the resources most effectively now while I'm running around doing this I'm hoping that several things are going to happen firstly robot speed is the, the first thing that I'm hoping will uh, will help us okay what is that nope filters 10 okay so that's just sped up my robots which will be a good thing in the long run you notice that I've only got about 200 working at the moment which is pretty indicative of um, this system because they only have to go short distances um, it seems to work okay you don't want this working you know have you know raw inputs here the furnace here and then all your storage up here somewhere that that wouldn't work very well um, speaking of storage the dumb way in which these bots work where are these going I must chase them I've been deleting storage um, containers all around the base 
trying to get it so that they use the the ones closest to it. Hopefully there's no more up here. Doesn't look like there is. Brilliant. So let's go back down. This video um, is kind of long, but this is quite a um, complex uh, idea. You notice here that our iron is now starting to buffer up, which is nice. And it's just our copper that is an issue. So there's lots of lights and movement. Um, don't really worry too much. You see here that um, both our iron plate and our copper, it's just crashed. So we've got 500 of each, which means that basically all right this says okay well we've got 600 we need everything we got so it's just ordering everything to make um, copper plate this on the other hand is saying okay well we've got 3,000 of it and as each it clicks up each thousand okay we'll just have a look at the production numbers here so orange is um, our iron plate and green is our copper plate you see how it's just kicking and changing to, to what we need. You notice here that it's starting to actually reduce the speed at which we're doing iron, which is allowing more copper to be, be made, which is increasing um, you know, the speed of the other. Um, if I was to do this again, I would make um, a long skinny block. Say so have, um, I don't know, 20, a row of 20 of them in uh, rows of, well, how many have we got? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so a row of, of 20, 5 deep, and uh, do it that way in, in increments of, say, 500. Because that way it's very, very well controlled. You notice that we're using a lot of bots right now. That may be because we're ferrying so much crap across the map. Where's all of us going? Okay. So because I've dotted storage boxes all over the place, it's just dumping crap wherever, which is increasing the drain on my um, poor robots. It seems like it's it's determined to use the most far away box it can. So here's another box down here. You can tell why where they flock to. Little turds. That should be enough capacity to hold everything. Distance is a big issue though. You want to make sure that the distance that they're traveling isn't too far. And while I'm weeding out problems with all of this. So you notice that um, our iron plate is up to 4.8k. Our copper is still in the bin, but uh, that'll, um, that'll recover eventually. Okay, here's some more storage boxes. Let's uh, get rid of these as well. Now I'm hoping that's forcing it to use these. Seems like it. Wonderful. Ah, oh dear. So. You notice here now that we've got 1.3k. It's put one science pack back in the system, which is cool. Um, it's saying, okay, well, we don't need quite as much now, so we'll back off the speed a little bit. This is saying, okay, well, we've got 4.6 at the moment, so we'll, we'll use these many rows, but we'll leave four in reserve, you know. And that, that's kind of what's happening up here. You'll see that there's mixed rows, where there's rows where it's, you know, iron here and copper there and iron here and a little bit more copper up here. And it'll be mixed because it's just first in best dressed, okay. Both, both products want to use that row and it's whichever ends up throwing it in. Now I hope you've um, enjoyed this video, I hope you um, have learnt something. 
I uh, had a lot of fun building this thing. It is, uh, it's some next level shit. Let's put it like that. Let's put it that way. And, um, RK84 and, and Medusalem are completely, uh, completely the, um, the ones who came up with this idea. I'm just copying it and making a YouTube video about it so that all you people can, uh, can enjoy their idea and their hard work. Now if you have questions, if you don't understand something, um, something in particular, ask away. I'll probably revisit this one, just like I did the um, the emergency steam generator. If people ask enough questions or if I've um, you know, glossed over something that's particularly uh, important, it's been known to happen. Thank you very much for joining me uh, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.